Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida, where we make hard candy. This is Greg, and today's video is going to celebrate the new actress becoming Doctor Who. Now, if you're watching this video long after it was posted, this video was filmed and posted the week before Jodie Whittaker took the mantle of Doctor Who, becoming the first female actress to play the role. And I thought I could celebrate this by depicting Jodie Whittaker's new outfit. She's going to be wearing a shirt with a rainbow on it and yellow suspenders, and I can do a rainbow and yellow suspenders and hard candy. And I thought this would be a great way to welcome in a new doctor and to have some fun. We've already cooked the sugar up to temperature and we poured it on the table and now we're adding food coloring. Before we poured the candy, we'd already flavored it and we chose the flavor of raspberry because, well, the doctor is the master of space and time and raspberry is the flavor of the center of the galaxy. Yeah, let me let that sit in for a bit. So they were doing a space survey. They sifted through thousands of signals from Sagittarius B2, a vast dust cloud at the center of our galaxy, and they were searching for amino acids. They didn't find amino acids, but they did find a substance called ethyl formate. And ethyl formate is the chemical that is primarily responsible for the flavor of raspberry. And we're going to do another raspberry video. But in this case, think about it. Raspberry is the flavor of space, and the Time Lord is the master of space and time. I don't know the flavor of time. Well, maybe that would be time. But in any event, we're going to do raspberry for the flavor of this candy. We've added red, blue, green, yellow, and black to the hot sugar. We boiled off the water, and we're going to cut it apart into pieces. We're also leaving a spot in uncolored that will become white. We're going to be doing this because this rainbow is more complicated than you think. We're going to be gaining some of the colors directly from the food coloring. On the hot table, as opposed to the cold table we're on now, we're going to be mixing a couple of colors together to make another stripe. And on top of that, we're counting on your eyes to blend the colors and make this rainbow match the shirt fairly closely in your own mind. That's what candy's about a lot of times, tricking you into seeing what you think you see and playing on the touchstones of our mind. It's sort of like a tastier version of Doctor Who's psychic paper. As we blend the colors and the stripes to be opaque, let's think about the female Time Lords in the recent Doctor Who episodes. The general who was in the episode Time Bent in the Peter Capaldi episode got shot by the Doctor and regenerated into a woman, showing clearly that this can be done. And before that, of course, the Master had come back as Missy, the uh, evil Time Lady, I guess. And both of these are in modern history, but if we go back to the old series, there are a lot more female Time Lords. It's always been tricky to refer to Doctor Who in the correct tense, past, future, present, because time travel kind of makes that pointless. And now we have the gender issue also, so for convenience I'm just going to refer to the Doctor in the gender he was in when the episode that I'm talking about was aired. The first female Time Lord on the series happened in the first episode back in 1963. It was Susan, the Doctor's own granddaughter. Yep, the series started with the Doctor traveling with his granddaughter until they parted ways. Since then, he's had no family on board. Well, except his wife. But she wasn't really a Gallifreyan. There was another Time Lady named Rodan who made a quick appearance. Of course, there's also Romana Verlatralunda, who's known as Romana for short. There were two actresses who played her, who traveled with the Tom Baker Doctor Who. And I always liked the second one, Lala Ward. She has some great connections into fandom and into history. The fandom connection is she was best friends with Douglas Adams, who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide. Her history connection is that her great-grandmother was the first person killed by an automobile. She also ended up marrying Tom Baker, the doctor she played against, which happened later on with David Tennant and the Doctor's Daughter. And in her first episode, Douglas Adams was the script director, or the script editor, of the episode that she premiered in in Doctor Who. So it all connects together with her. Romana, too, was also one of the few Time Lords that may have not been involved in the Time War. She was dropped off in a Tom Baker episode in East Space, which is a parallel dimension, and she may still be floating around there now, at least in the Doctor Who universe. There was Hallie and Flavia, originally meant to be one character, but played by two different actresses at different times, that did a great job in Doctor Who. And then there was the Rani and the Inquisitor in later episodes. 
and there's no really good reason to watch them. They weren't very good episodes. And I think with the exception of the Doctor's Daughter that you can argue if she's really a Time Lord or not, we've covered all the Lady Time Lords out there so far in canonical Doctor Who. But fan fiction had a different thing to say. And we're just going to concentrate on some video clips of two particular appearances of the Doctor outside of Doctor Who regenerating into a woman. Back to Jodie Whittaker's outfit here in Candy. This is a much harder design than I first anticipated. It actually took me three tries before I got to this attempt that you're seeing now. And, uh, well, the failures are not worth looking at. But the success is not bad, and I think I can continue to make it. We've separated the colors out, and now we're just going to make them into very cool sheets and stack them. It's hard to describe what I'm doing here that's so difficult, but it's all about temperature control to make sure the candy doesn't bend. And bending is something we don't want it to do. Or rather, bending not as a unit. One of my regular requests is to show more of different parts of the candy making. So this video is going to show you more of the pulling and the assembly, and I sped up other parts of it, like the cutting and the stirring. And we'll switch it around in another video or two. We're going to try to make everybody happy, but we can't do it all in the same video easily. If you'd like to try this candy for yourself or any of our other candies, just head over to www.pd.net. You can check out our full candy selection online. And if you're ever in Tallahassee, come and visit us. We're right off the Thomasville Road exit of I-10. We're just about five minutes from the exit. And we're open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. We make candy most days, but not all of the time we're open. Heck, we're open 15 hours a day. And you can come and hopefully see us. We don't have a regular schedule, but if you're lucky, you can catch us making candy. Otherwise, you can just visit the store, enjoy breakfast, shop for some toys, try our ice cream, and of course, buy some candy. In written fandom, there's a ton of references to the Doctor regenerating into a woman or other female Time Lords, and on the radio dramas, there's some of that as well. But we're going to avoid that. This is a visual medium here, and we're going to just discuss the two occurrences that had happened on film. Occurrence 1, which is the most recent occurrence, happened with the Red Noses adaptation of Doctor Who. If you're not familiar, Red Noses is a comic relief fundraiser. And they made a Doctor Who episode for charity starring Rowan Atkinson. And he regenerated a ton of times during this short. And then the last regeneration was into Patsy from Absolutely Fabulous. Even to the surprise of the Doctor, the Doctor became Joanna Lumley. And, uh, introduced herself very politely to the Master. To make the off-yellow shade of these stripes, I blend a tiny bit of our dark black candy into a little bit of the yellow candy. It's going to make the transition, I hope, which makes the pattern resemble the shirt, well, more than if I didn't. The first reference I can find of people talking about Doctor Who regenerating into a woman was back in 1979, and it came out of the mouth of Tom Baker, the fourth Doctor to play the role, and he was talking about a woman possibly being his successor. Obviously that didn't happen, but the idea was planted. It's important to see what fandom was like in the United States at this point. Doctor Who started airing in the United States in 1978, and in, by about 1984, Colin Baker became the new Doctor, and he wasn't the best received actor in the role. And people were looking for something. There was sort of a vacuum. There was discussions of whether Doctor Who was dying or not. And back in 1984, Ryan Johnson took this task onto himself. For the Worldcon of 1984, he made a film of Doctor Who, and he wanted to do it different. He realized he couldn't recreate Tom Baker, so what he did to make it separate from everything that had come before is he regenerated the Doctor into a woman. In 1984, Seattle Films released The Wrath of Yukor, starring Barbara Benedetti. 
She ended up taking over the role and she was a professional actress. And this made this different than other fan films of the time. She actually had formal training, actually just about everybody on screen did. Often these series seem like, you know, kids playing, and this wasn't it. This was a real show. Money was put into special effects, it was filmed on 16mm film, not on the very primitive videotape recorders which were terrible back in the day. It had microphone crews, it was actually a professional production. If you look back to the middle Tom Baker episodes when they were running out of money, you can see the quality wasn't that far off from the real Doctor Who episodes. And this was made for a world con film competition. Didn't do well there but it's been kicking around for years, increasing in popularity. If you like the old Doctor Whos, you might like this series. If you don't like the old Doctor Whos, well... We're still going to make really great tasting raspberry candy to celebrate Jodie Whittaker getting the title role in Doctor Who. Barbara Benedetti passed away in 1991, leaving a legacy as one of the most unsung heroes in Doctor Who. She did pave a new way for people to look at things back in the early 80s. But we should really remember, these episodes were good, maybe not by today's standards, but in comparison to the episodes that were being aired at the time in the United States. The special effects and the acting were pretty decent. Well, I really couldn't say. With both the uh, stabilizer and the coordinate display out, we could be most anywhere. My God, we may have even slipped sideways through the continuum into an alternate dimension. Do you really think so? No, I seriously doubt it. But the first order of business is to go inside that building up there and see if there's anyone who can help us. Well, now, wait a minute, Doctor. I mean, well, you think that's wise? I mean, we don't know who or what's inside there. Well, that's never stopped me before. And Barbara Benedetti's portrayal of Doctor Who captures the spirit of the Doctor. And a lot of fan films miss that. And I'm going to leave some links in the description here to the various bits of information I found about the raspberry flavor of space and, of course, the Barbara Benedetti versions of Doctor Who. Now that we've built the log of candy, we have to scale it down to rods, and we do this on our batch roller. This batch roller was made somewhere between 1895 and 1910, which is kind of cool, considering that the companion of Barbara Benedetti was a late 1800s chimney sweep from London. Yeah, I'm stretching to make a connection, but heck, it's what I got. And in the end of this video and in the description, we'll also give you a link to our other video about us making police box candy and talking about some experiences in early Doctor Who conventions. The stripes and the suspenders are now visible all the way down these rods of candy. Now all we've got to do is change them into bite-sized morsels to enjoy. We're going to bag them up and ship them out to everybody, and you'll be able to get your own if you want at our website, www.pd.net. We want to thank you for watching our video, and if you like it, we have a lot more here on YouTube. Just go and check them out, and subscribe to us here, and turn on alerts here on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you'll find us having lots of interesting constant posts about our ice cream and our candy there as well. Thank you for watching. If you ever make it to Tallahassee, we're right off I-10 on the Thomasville Road exit. We're open from 7 a.m. starting for breakfast, and we close at 10 p.m. serving ice cream. Come on in. We'd love to see you, and perhaps you'll be lucky enough to see us make some candy. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.